tricky. Okay, hi. Uh, thank you for organizing this awesome event and thank you for being here. And I'm Hana. <clears throat> Today we will talk about understanding running programs written by somebody else. And there could be many different ways of debugging. Uh, reading through source code is one way we often use. But instead of reading source code, in this talk we will try to debug a running program using observed behavior. Okay. okay, before beginning, let me talk a little bit about myself. I work in the Go team inside of Google, and my and my team's role is to maintain Go libraries and tools used internally. They include the internal packages like RPC, HTTP, file, or tools for build and monitoring. We spend a lot of time helping other Go users and customers inside and outside of Google. Often we have to get our hands dirty, debugging not only our own code, but also the customer's application code. So let's pretend that this is another day, typical day at work. I start my day opening my inbox, and there is a mail arrived. Okay, to go first, desperate SWE, software engineer, strange timeout issue. Some of requests occasionally time out. I check the CPU utilization, status of backend or everything, but nothing is strange. What should I do? Please help. Here is our server and code. Okay, this is a typical day. But Brian Koenigan said, debugging is twice as hard as writing the code in the first place. Therefore, if you write the code as cleverly as possible, you are by definition not smart enough to debug it. Yeah, debugging is hard, goes simplicity and powerfulness, along with the community-wide emphasis on coding style, that helped us a lot improving code readability, but debugging is still hard. And debugging and reading others' code, that is much harder. People use different terminology and language in their code, and the system is probably inherently uh, more complex than the example code you see from blog or tutorial. Or it is implementing something new that is foreign to me and there is too much of code. Many code exploration tools, static tools, uh, static analysis tools, and IDE, yeah, they try to help, but still, it's hard. Even debugging my own code written two weeks ago, that is challenging, right? So, let's try to start debugging via observed behavior first, instead of directly jumping into the code. It is always useful to have a rough idea about the system we try to debug. Okay, the des desperate engineer like, told me that their service, uh, Combobulate service, uses gRPC. Okay, I know what is gRPC. That is an open source remote procedure core system developed by, uh, at Google, and now it is available as open source. To serve a gRPC request, the Convolute service sends a racing RPC uh, request to its Convolute backend service. Okay, it's simple. So here is our plan. We will try to debug this with a couple of well-known exist existing tools that I have a pretty good experience with. And also there is a spoiler, actually. In this specific case, we will need a more powerful tool. So we will take a little bit less obvious choice uh, that, is, uh, that will be available in the upcoming Go release. So hopefully we can help this desperate engineer at the end of the talk. Usual workflow for debugging latency issue starts with uh, checking the current usage of resources such as CPU and memory. Are we overloaded? Are we allocating too much memory? 
or, and so on. Good routine stack trace reported by Google Runtime is also another useful tool. If there is any stock Go routine, and if this stock Go routine affects the latency, this is the tool to use. Request tracing tools are the main tools to check for latency debugging. Golang.org, oh, it's not full URL, xnettrace, that is one of the basic request tracing system traditionally used inside of Google, but now it is open source. And distributed tracing tools like OpenSensors, OpenTracing, Zipkin, and there are many tools that allow to analyze latency problem involving distributed RPCs. They are quite useful. So if your program doesn't make use of it yet, then like maybe it's time to consider. <coughs> anyway, so gRPC along with this uh, golang.org xnet trace allows us to trace uh, all incoming and outgoing RPCs. With this, you can examine the latency distribution and samples of the completed or active RPCs through web endpoints. Debu uh, web endpoints uh, debug request. This is the page from the Convolute Service server that we are debugging, and there were indeed two kinds of RPCs traced. One is the incoming RPCs receive Convolute Service, and then outgoing RPC the combobulate backend service. And the tracing package tracks latency distribution of the last minute, hour, and total. And OK, let's click this minute link. Median latency is less than 100 milliseconds. OK, but there were some RPCs that took more than one second. The page also shows some example traces bucketed based on the latency. So here, let's click this uh, more than one second bucket. It shows, okay, ac according to these samples, convolute services, convolute method is taking more than one second. The context was canceled, maybe timed out. But I cannot find anything useful, unfortunately, in this case. Okay, next, let's check the GoRoutine stack dump. Uh, we can inspect that from the debug pprop GoRoutine web endpoint of the server. The endpoint is available by importing the net HTTP pprop package. With the debug, debug equals two parameter, the, trace, the endpoint will actually uh, show the trace that includes the, which state each GoRoutine is in. If the GoRoutine stayed long enough in the state, uh, it also presents how long the GoRoutine has been in that state. So it's a uh, Often it helps uh, locating the stuck go routine, if any. Unfortunately, in this case, like this is not super helpful. So we need a different tool. Let's try something else. Execution tracer. Have you heard about any uh, the execution tracer? Yeah. <laughs> so it's included in the Go uh, distribution. It traces various runtime activities such as Go routine creation and termination, blocking events, Cisco, and so on, everything. So maybe that can help us figuring out what is happening inside the runtime when the request fails to complete before the deadline. If net HTTP proof package is imported, the program exports an endpoint through which we can collect and export this trace. Usually for busy server, this tracing collects a lot of data, a lot. So if the trace gets too large, the tool that reads and analyzes it will suffer. So <laughs> let's uh, be less ambitious in this case. I think five seconds is sufficient. Uh, the RPC ends less than a second, and the server gets uh, about 2,500 QPS. Okay, so we will get enough samples with a five second sample. Okay, here we collect the trace for five seconds and this car command will store the output in the file trace.out and the go to trace command is what you need to analyze the file. Okay, the tool is a web app and the go to trace command will start a local web server on port 12345 here. The main page is currently very simple. View trace is the most famous mode in execution tracer. Let's click it. 
Ooh, pretty UI. Huh? <laughs> so this uses Chrome tra Chrome's trace viewer UI. It shows uh, the number of goroutines, heap and threads statistics over time, GC network time, uh, the timer activities, and each row actually that corresponds to the runtime processes where goroutines will be scheduled in. So like a lot of information. This is quite useful when checking whether the program is sufficiently loaded or overloaded or idle. And we can zoom in and inspect the flow event uh, that represents the relationship among all these events and go routines. We can also see go runtime's garbage collector related uh, activities. This tool helped us many, many times when debugging runtime's GC and scheduler related bugs. A very powerful tool and carrying a lot of detailed information. But for our specific case, uh, like I feel like we are trying to find the needle in a haystack. So let's go back to the main menu. What does it offer? A goroutine analysis. This page shows per goroutine execution time analysis. Goroutines are named after the functions they are running. Based on that name, I think maybe this uh, serve stream function that is the function run by a goroutine that is forked by gRPC for each incoming RPC request. Yeah, appropriately naming packages and functions is very important also for debugging. Let's click the link. Okay, for each goroutine of this kind, the two reports execution time breakdown with color-coded horizontally stacked bars. And also it offers uh, links to goroutine-oriented trace view. What does it mean? This is like the previous trace view, but this time it's focusing on the goroutine we are inspecting. Its row corresponds to the goroutine, not the runtime process. And you can see the timeline of goroutine better with this visualization mode. And it starts from the serve stream goroutine, uh, 654099, uh, we chose. And from this view, we can tell the goroutine was canceled by a goroutine that reads uh, from network, meaning that the remote client of this convoluted service canceled the request after one second. Yeah. <laughs> but still, it's not clear to me what happened before cancellation occurred. Why this goroutine could make any progress. We need a better tool for this specific issue debugging. So the execution trace includes so many goroutines, thousands of goroutines or more than that, and they look too similar. I wish I could label them and group them for better analysis results. I wish I could connect them with the application's logic more closely and more like easily. Here is a good news. Go 1.11 will include the user annotation for execution tracer. It allows us to add extra information so we can correlate user level information with the, the runtime events. It supports a simple timestamped logging, the log, and category is a user defined name used to group the log message to aid the later analysis. And message is just a message to log. It's a no op when tracing is disabled, and log f is for lazy formatting. In the execution tracer, the log message will be pre uh, presented as a timestamped event. Look at this uh, tiny, tiny little line. Actually, this uh, corresponds to a log message I added, and comes with some useful information like stack traces, timestamp, and the message. And then region is another type of user event. It can be thought as an extension of log, but with the time interval. It corresponds to a section of code executed by the go routine. And so it starts and ends in the same go routine by definition. This is suitable for, uh, suitable for tracing functions calls. This is also known uh, if tracing is disabled. Start region makes the beginning of the region and the region needs to end in the same goroutine, and the region has a name too. 
The execution tracer will present the region information along with the goal routine. The region can be nested. And so we can have a better understanding of a single goal routine's a lifetime with region and log. But often we need more than one goal routine to get things done. For example, one HTTP request that will require collaboration of uh, at least a couple of goal routines to run, uh, for example, to run the server handler or send and receive from underlying connection and so on, right? So we need a way to group those if we want to get the full picture of how a request comes and gets served. So this is why there is a task. Task is a high-level concept that is more closely matched to a user application level op operation. It helps grouping of related goal routines, and it can start and end in different goal routines. This is suitable for tracing user requests. Here is the API for task. It takes a string argument for specifying the type of task. It returns a task object and new context object that carries the task. So if you work with some other packages that pass context, that it can, you can actually use it easily. If the parent context already contains a task embedded, the newly created task becomes a child of the parent task. So how it is presented in the UI? I got this from this Convobulate ser service server we are debugging. The server was built with a vendor the custom gRPC and new open sensors tracing API that uses this new API, tracing API. Here we have a task for incoming Convobulate service, and it has two children RPCs uh, are that are mapped to uh, children tasks here. Main menu again, usually defined tasks and usually defined regions. These two are the new analysis modes available from Go 1.11. Usually I go with uh, task analysis uh, uh, first, but for this presentation I will start with the region. The region analysis page involves per region latency histogram. The latency is the time between the region start and the region end. We can usually, uh, we, we are currently using a vendor, the gRPC, with some region annotation in it. So we can check that region, and this corresponds to the like, uh, handling of the, uh, the incoming request. Mostly less than 100 milliseconds it took, but there were some slow cases. Let's investigate by clicking the link. That leads us to region analysis mode that is very similar to goal routine analysis mode, but we use the region. Uh, many goal routines in this specific region are mostly blocked on synchronization primitives. The color actually matches. The pink one is a sync block, that means a synchronization primitive. And this region is associated with a task through the context passed in when we created uh, the region. So let's check out the task link first. It's similar to goroutine oriented trace view, but it has an extra section that presents a task hierarchy that I described before. And the task is named after the gRPC service and method name. And in this screenshot, the name is truncated, unfortunately, but you can see the full name by placing the cursor over the name. The children RPCs ended immediately after they were created. We can see goal routines involved in, uh, for the children RPCs. And there is a handle stream goal routine at the bottom, right? That was uh, still waiting. That's why the root task couldn't finish. Let's uh, zoom in and focus on goal routine involved in one of the children tasks. We added a couple of log messages in gRPC with the core result. And here we go, the tiny log message that indicates failure of the, GR, uh, the gRPC. I checked the other children GR, gRPC, and it failed too. Okay, it seems like uh, this uh, handle backend uh, request to go routine notified of another go routine named ask backends uh, about something, but the ask backend go routine ended without doing any more work. I wanted to check if this is common or uh, to all this uh, like a request pattern. 
Let's go back to the main menu. Let's try user-defined tasks this time. There are per task type latency histogram, and yes, we have a task corresponding to demo combobulate service combobulate RPCs, 38 RPCs to more than 1,000 milliseconds, one second. Click it. It shows all the events in the text format. Some users found this, e this is easier to navigate than the fancy Chrome-based trace viewer, so I'm now showing this here. And if you like uh, this Chrome-based trace viewer, then just follow the link over there. It will show the user trace view UI. Both the children RPCs failed here. Okay, that is a bad case. Here is a good case. Looks a bit different. No error other than RPC cancellation error. Probably it is from the RPC to the backend that lost in the race. And send the response region immediately following the children RPC's completion. That is uh, uh, something new, like we couldn't see from the bad case. This is something to check out. Uh, by the way, before moving, like I also want to note that there is a search box, so you can find the task containing some specific uh, message, log messages. Indeed, after the ask, after the ask backend routine was unblocked by a successful backend RPC call, it unblocked the handle stream routine in send re response region, like uh, in good case. Okay, I think we got enough information and ready to inspect the source. We may be a little bit more efficient in finding which part of the source code to look into. Yep, I saw this select in the trace, stack trace information. When a goroutine was blocked, it was indeed waiting for some reply, and, but context done condition was reached first. Why? Ask a backend was the goroutine that I also, uh, the, the, the function name I also noticed, and like there, ask a backend sends message to the reply channel conditionally. Do you remember that both children, the racing RPCs were failed? So yes, there was no sender. That's it. It's a time to fix the bug. So we debugged the latency issue together. We started with some well-known tools for latency debugging. Then we moved to the execution tracer. That's powerful, but often carries too much information. The new user annotation API helped us to narrow down the information uh, to the information to look into. In this presentation, we utilize the API and our knowledge on gRPC to narrow down the problem and found the bug. Execution tracer with user annotation uh, enhances observability of your program by connecting application level information with runtime level traces. So, we are done with our debugging, and thank you very much. <laughs>